So welcome everybody. Um, today we will talk about the systems biology markup language, SPML. Like mentioned, um, I will give a short introduction and then we will we'll do some practical things. Um, basically, I just ran to my computer and started it up. So uh, no time to prepare anything uh, or like no time to test the stuff. So you will see like uh, basically live action, how things are going. Um, yeah, but I think this is a good experience that you can basically see how the tools work and how, how you have to start things and how, how this is normally done. Um, yeah, still the overall goal is uh, building this um, whole body physiological based pharmacokinetic model. And today we are um, talking about um, the model encoding in um, SPML in a standard um, language and show a small example how we can build um, parts of such a model. My plan was to show how we can build a, a liver model um, and perhaps say a, a few words how, how this is later on connected to the um, whole body circulation. So um, like always, if you have questions in between, um, just let me know. Mm, otherwise, afterwards, we'll have a short Q&A session. Um, yeah, most of this I uh, said last time, SPML is the standard format for um, encoding um, models in biology, systems biology, and uh, systems medicine. It's a free and open standard, and um, we're using that for encoding the, the tissue models and also the this whole body models. Um, I think the most important part to understand is um, that SPML um, describes a process-based uh, process based systems. So everything which you can um, um, conceptually and mathematically put into processes which change change stage or change states, change variables, change parameters, and so on, can be easily encoded in, in SPML. Um, it's mainly made for ordinary differential equations, um, but also other um, modeling frameworks can be um, described with SPML. This is mainly done via um, extensions. Uh, for instance, um, with the FPC, you can do things like constraint-based modeling, or there's a qual, qual extensions, which allows to do Boolean models and so on. Um, yeah, perhaps a short reminder what the core components are, because in, when we build the liver model, most of these components will reoccur. And um, yeah, but what a model is basically in SPML is a collection of these ob objects. The main objects are compartments in which you can localize the species. The species are um, transformed via processes, and these processes are so-called reactions. You can add additional rules um, as assignment rules um, or other rules to, to the models to basically add additional ma mathematics to the models. There are other things like um, events, which allow to um, encode if, if something is happening in a model. For instance, if a certain variable reaches a threshold, then something else should happen and so on. That's, that's what you can do with events. And otherwise, we have um, things like unit definitions, function definitions, uh, initial assignments. Okay, but I think this is um, this becomes much clearer if you see how this is actually used and how how such a model um, looks later on. Um, in this practical part, we will use a few tools. Um, the main tool um, is um, SPML Utils, which is a library which allows to um, uh, create SPML models from scratch. And you basically define um, via Python code um, how these objects should look look like. For instance, here. Um, with this example code, you can define a parameter, which is called IZG im um, ke bill, which is here um, uh, inhibition rate um, for for an importer. You can give it a value, give it a unit in this case millimolar and um, a name, and um, can add additional nodes um, nodes to the um, to the object. There are certain um, things like annotations. In this case, it's a, for instance an annotation that this is an inhibitory constant. So there's at least some core fields which you can fill out, but you have the options to um, describe in detail what, what the object is, for instance, via the names, the notes, or, or annotation terms. Yeah, SPML utils basically is, is this Python library um, to, to create all these objects and um, provides a, a lot of shortcuts so that this model building becomes, becomes easier. Um, what we also use a lot is like this SPML for humans which allows to um, visualize the models and, and the content of the models. Um, now this is an interactive web, web application where you can 
uh, load the models and then see the content and um, at least see what is what is happening with the um, within the model. For instance, here you can um, um, understand what certain parameters are and um, um, get a more detailed information via these annotations, um, which are resolving um, via databases to to more information. For instance, as you wrote, like okay, this is a um, SPO, this SPO term, which is a quantitative systems description parameter. You get um, all this text for for free via this um, via these tools. Okay. Last but not least, we use a tool which is called SciSPML, and um, this is a Cytoscape application which allows um, to visualize the models in the, um, I would say, the network structure of the model and how objects are connected in the model. And this is often like very helpful to understand um, um, and um, yeah, explore the, the the structure. So normally we use this um, various tools together like doing um, uh, model building and then um, um, looking at the reports and looking at the graphical representation. And this allows to get a more um, holistic view over the over the model. Um, there are different um, views in the model. I would say the most important view for you is this um, kinetic view, which allows to see basically how the species are connected via the reactions and get a bit of information what the compartments are. Okay, um, I would say this, this uh, like uh, yeah, last time I, I went qu quickly through that, but this is the main thing. And today, now we would basically just um, try to use these different things and, and see how this goes. Um, yeah, like I said, I had no clue what to do. So we were, basically, I would do what I would normally do when I build a computational model or, or help a student to build a computational model. I think this is the most destructive Instructive thing we can we can do at this stage um, of uh, of our knowledge. So um, okay, first thing this model should um, reside somewhere in a repository. So what we did last time we we set up this um, um, uh, set up the repository. We call this X Research. Uh, I have to go to GitHub. So this is located on GitHub. Um, it was called X for short 2022. And until now, we, we didn't do much, but just adding this readme. And so what we will do now is um, starting to um, build the models within this repository. So last time, I, I uh, as far as I remember, I already um, cloned this repository, um, which means I, I have a local copy of that. Normally, um, if you start working on something, you should um, always do a uh, get status, just checking if you have um, um, changes in, in your own local files and uh, make sure that you pull the uh, latest changes. Um, what I also do is um, normally I have um, certain branches um, and um, meaning that the main branch is basically pretty stable and everything which is working. And um, yeah, um, we work, if I do actual work, I'm working normally in a different branch and then be bringing everything together. Branch means just, okay, you can basically say, okay, now I want a, a local, like something like a local copy from my repository and um, you work on that and later on say, yeah, now I bring back the changes again to the to this uh, main branch. That's so you just branch off in like in a timeline and later on you go back together um, with this, with the other branch. So we're doing this now. We just um, basically create a different branch. And I call this develop. Um, and then we um, um, would start using um, yeah, some code editor um, and uh, to work with this um, repository. In this case, I would... Um, I'm um, used PyCharm here. You can also use our other code editors or, or something else. This is basically, I would just say, a, um, a graphical front end which allows to easily write code. I personally can highly recommend this PyCharm. It, it works very well, especially if you develop Python, but other things like Visual Studio Code and so on work also very nice. So, what I do now, I basically create a new project here, um, which corresponds to this, um, to this repository. In this case, um, Wait, so it's a, it's a X research repository. And I will just open this in, in a new window. 
So most likely we'll need, need this stuff here. And then you can see, um, we now have this file is in here. Until now, there's only a, a readme in here. And uh, otherwise, uh, not much more. I quickly have to figure out how to um, how to zoom in here. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Because there's a somewhere nice setting, but I never, never find find the setting here. This one. Oh, but so it's in file settings. Okay, let's see if I can find this. Um, I have to go here to. So this is also like a lot of things. Like often, um, we also don't don't know what to do, and uh, like Google and uh, search engines are our main friend. So like the first thing is often like we we just um try to figure out um well you you Google and try to find a solution, and um often this is um I would say this is a, a lot of a big part of um of of programming okay what happened here where's my where's my window now um i have to close some other stuff so, oh, okay unfortunately i think i oh so I already broke something. Uh -huh. This is starting nicely. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, so I yeah, will just um, I will just start this clean and close everything because I have basically twenty windows open here, which you all don't need. So okay, let's start clean. I will just open a. a uh, PyCharm instance. Uh, if you have questions, just ask. Otherwise, this is, um, I don't know. I have no, probably some people who already programmed have, have seen something like that. Um, otherwise, I would say this is pretty new. So, Let's go back. So let's open. Yeah, something really went wrong. Um, okay. So back here in this window. Now I try to now create the settings. File settings. Um, editor. Oh, editor. General. Okay. Let's see where is it. Oh, scrolling. Enable. Somewhere there should be a setting. Uh, check the change font size, zoom. Change font size option should here be somewhere. I don't know, change font size with control. All editors, okay, apply. Okay, let's see if this works. No, it doesn't work at all here. Oh, I don't know. Control plus mouse wheel. This is not working at all. Okay, let's see. Probably I have the wrong window. Oh, yeah. Okay, now this is working. Okay, there's mainly that I can make this bigger because probably you can't read most of that. Okay, perfect. So we figured that out. So let's get um, started with the actual work. Um, so what will we do first? Um, in this case, I definitely would um, um, create a, a new directory where I would put in the our source code. I call this just source and mark the directory as a sources root so that we can easily import that. And then we can write code here. Um, yeah, because I know we will basically, um, I could just call this X research for now. Yeah, so we basically just create the folder structure for now. Um, we know we will have different things to do. One thing is building uh, building the models. Other things are like parameter fitting, um, doing um, model visualizations, creating simulation um, experiments, which basically means like um, simulating certain things with the model. Um, but in the first step, we have to have to create a model. So we will do this with um, hmm. So we'll first create a uh, new 
a Python package for that. And we'll just call it, I think model, this is good. And then we will just create a liver model in here. New, as in file. Okay, and then we just have a Python file. Okay. That's basically it. Normally what you do in, in Python, if um, so this is a, a file, which is also often called a module. And uh, to execute that file, you can write um, like this if name equals main at the end. And then you could just execute something um, like for instance, print a message, something. And then if you um, execute the whole thing, um, then um, this will be printed. To print that, um, we need like basically a saying how this should be executed. And for that, we have to define an um, environment um, and um, also say what should be installed in the environment. Um, The easy, easiest way to do this is basically um, just um, define a requirements txt and say what should be uh, installed. In this case, we um, basically um, would need um, only SPML utils as a requirement, and then we um, have to create an environment and then install that um, that dependency in there. It basically means like we, we just create a programming environment where we have Python, which can execute code, and we um, install the dependencies for that. Like I said, don't worry if this is all a lot of information at the beginning, there will be more detailed instruction which you have to execute and also like, okay, there's a lot of Q&A sessions if this is uh, not working or if you have issues uh, setting that up. Yeah, so in this case, um, I will just create a new virtual environment um, with uh, make virtual env. I call this also X research. I'll also say which um, which Python, ver Python version I want here. Um, uh, I'll try this here. And now we can install um, things in here. And I will just say, please install the requirements which are defined in this requirements txt. And so it's uh, fetching everything here. So it's basically um, um, going to the web. Um, and um, in a sim like simplest explanation is basically there is some code in here and it's um, pulling this code and it's installing it in the virtual environment. This is um, uh, distributed in PyPy, and so you can easily install that. And so now we should um, have something installed here in our environment. Um, and we can basically see that we have this um, SPML utils um, here installed. Okay, this would be the main thing to do. And now we have a Python environment um, where this dependency is installed. And then, then we just basically say, okay, we want to use that. Um, so, um, so we would just say, okay, please use this um, existing environment, which we um, just created. And this is um, located in, here it's located in Rix research. Okay, okay. And then it's just doing some updates um, here, but um, this is basically it. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm um, I'm just installing the um, development version here. This is not important for you. This is just for myself that I'm working with my local development code. Um, so you don't have to do that. I'm doing right now, but. Um, other things. Um, yeah, just ignore that what I did right now. Okay, so what we have, we basically said uh, we have here a file where we say, okay, these are the dependencies we want. We just um, say also we want a dependency which is larger than uh, 0.76 of this package in here. And we basically created um, a, a file um, which we can um, which we can execute. Oh, what is going on here? Uh, I like that. 
some read time out, but not on them. Hmm. Don't like that. Yeah, well, this is classical development that you see probably some server is somewhere down and uh, we can't get the dependencies which we would like to have. So I will just do something else. With deactivate, you can uh, deactivate virtual environments. With move virtual environment, you can remove that. So I'm just um, cleaning up and removing the whole thing and uh, recreated. Oh, man. And use uh, Python uh, Python 3.9. And it's just um, because I'm sure these packages exist for, for here. Um, we install the uh, requirements we have from uh, the X research. Um, Uh, Matthias, mm -hmm. so um, you simply deinstall the package and are reinstalling it right now. Like you didn't exactly. I just recreated a new environment with Python three nine um, okay. to make because um, I'm pretty sure they have um, just issues right now with resolving the Python three ten uh, dependencies. So um, this should basically um, it's just uh, doing the th same thing again, um, just with a different Python version. Um, um, Otherwise, yeah. if this makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, I just thought you were uh, removing the whole repository and I was scared that. For no, 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 no. <laughs> I No, the virtual environment. This is basically, yeah, we have the repository, which is the data. Um, yeah, I see. And now it worked. Um, it just had um, this. Um, Probably the PyPy server is down or some some um, cache cache server somewhere in the internet. So I uh, just went by a different version and, uh, and this was only because we can't rely that the server is coming up in the next few minutes. Okay. Uh, long story short, um, we have reinstalled that. Um, just have to make sure that we um, um, that our interpreter settings are correct because this is probably not what we want. Um, And using this X research, okay, okay, apply, apply everything, and then we're just checking. We have now the Python three nine, and basically this stuff was now installed in our environment. I think the important thing is that the SPML utils is in here. Um, yeah, and um, just checking if I also have the um, development version now um, for myself. And this looks good. I'm basically using my local version here. Okay, perfect. And now we can start to execute this here. There's, um, okay, there's basically a button up here where you can execute things. Um, just here, we'll just go to edit configurations and make some setups. So it's good to have this emulate terminal and output console active here. Um, okay, and then now we can execute that. It's basically I. Um, um, Click just on Shift F10, and then this will execute this uh, file. So it's running through here, and it says, "Okay, if name is main." So I should execute it. In this case, just says "Print hello world," and so this printed hello world. So now we have the basic things set up. We have an environment. We have the dependencies in there, and we can execute code. So now we only said we printed something, but what we actually want to do is, uh, of course, now build a computational model. For that, we can use the the, the SBML um, utils package. Okay, so far so good. What we first have to do is um, import the the basic things from um, from SBML utils. These are basically the the functions to to create models. Hmm. Okay, and I will just uh, look for a nice, nice template um, where I can copy stuff. Um, 
So, perfect here. So we have the first two imports. Um, um, so we're importing from um, SPML utils, um, um, the factory. Uh, we import everything, which means um, all the functions um, to create create model components and create models. Then uh, we're also interested in adding metadata. So from this, we also import everything. Um, also, I'm using some some templates, um, mainly for um, for adding um, information to the models. This is not about the content. It's just um, that I can um, add some metadata easily. Often we also need other things like uh, NumPy. So I'm just importing that uh, for now. And pandas we often using. Um, so. And these uh, NumPy and pandas are already included in the SPML utils installation. So we uh, don't, don't have to list them in the dependencies. Okay. So what we will start with is um, just defining um, uh, an ID of our model. Um, so we will say this is our, um, no, we need a name for that. I will just call call it um, ACE level. Let's see. Um, like I said, this is, um, I'm just um, swinging that today, um, how I would normally build a model. And so, um, yeah, just if, yeah, just ask, please. Yeah, so I have the question. Um, so we have two different molecules, um, resinopril and uh, no, resinopril and ramipril. Exactly. Um, so are we creating one liver model for just one of these model for one just one of these molecules, or are, is is this the model for both the molecules? This will be for we will start with one more molecule, and last time I uh, showed basically one looked at one publication, so I will just um, check which we had. And and this is basically yeah. Now we have to figure out okay what, um, what we want to put in the model. In this case, I would say we start with uh, ramipril, okay. and we have to have to have some basic understanding what metabolites and components should be in there. So we will definitely need the ramipril in there. Um, but okay. we also need something else in there. Yeah. So. So should we name then the uh, model? <laughs> or something yeah, we will like name that. that like basically uh, we, we do that while we do it we basically figured this out right now I, I basically okay. for if you okay, asked sorry. like one minute ago I had no clue right now I would say okay yeah we would definitely go for, go for one of the substances first in this case we go for this ramipril because we looked at this one paper what we basically what we figured out um, last time in the ref review the basically two main component uh, metabolites one is the ramipril we need one of the uh, products, which is a ramiprilat, and most likely this will uh, this metabolism will happen in the liver. So for now, we will just build a liver model, which is converting the ramipril to the ramiprilat. So this okay. is uh, what we will do here, and we will name this uh, accordingly. So okay, and this is our ramipril. Okay, and then. Um, Things become, of course, more complicated. We need a, 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 a new uh, package because we're going just down. Rami, uh, real. So, okay, add. Because we're just building the Rami Pril model here. Okay, refactor. Okay, everything good. So we basically just have X research Ramipril and build a model here. And this is our Ramipril uh, liver model. Normally I also version this um, to document a bit what, what is going on. We just say this is our version one. And now we um, create just uh, create a model object and put certain things in the model. Um, The SID is basically the, the um, ID of the model. In this case, we just use the, uh, this MID, which we already defined. We can um, define a name. Um, this is basically the model for hepatic uh, Rami uh, pre metabolism. Even if we don't know much about it for now, but we'll just put this here. 
I also have some notes. Um, and I will just say, okay, this is, um, yeah, just write the, um, I'll just write the version in here. And I will write a bit of uh, change log information that we know what uh, happened within the model. In our case, in the version uh, version one, um, I would say this is initial uh, NAMI model for demonstration. So we're just uh, starting with something. Okay, but so this would be information which we put in here. And adding the terms of use, which we, which we imported. Let's see, did I do everything correct? Okay. And for Rami, we never will listen. Just here, we need a comma here to separate the arguments. Okay, so we have that. And what I normally add is also who created the things. Um, yeah. So, um, for now, I just write myself in here, but of course we have to add everybody who's working on the model uh, later on. So I basically just imported uh, uh, the information here about myself, but we have to add all the information of the people who um, work on the model. So for now, the, uh, it's only me, but it's okay. Okay, let's. That's basically it. This is a, a very basic model. We don't have any objects in here. We just uh, define some some core um, core information on the model, and now we can um, create the model. So instead of printing something here, um, we will uh, we will um, create the whole thing. Um, but I also what I will add is. Um, some information in this init so that we can, um, which we can reuse um, from um, basically in different in different contexts. Um, one important information is, um, for instance, our base path. Um, I have to check that I do the right version. So we will do here the Rami pre this init function, we will change. And so we will just define here the, the base path um, so that we always know like to what path are we talking relatively. Okay, no, it doesn't. And then we will also define some uh, model base path. Basically, it's our bath pass, and then we are in the models. And then this is our, our results. So here's the code to create the model, and the created model um, we will just write in a results uh, subfolder. Okay, also good. And this is basically our model base pass. Okay, and we want to say, please create the, the model in this uh, model base pass. So what we will do is we um, create the model now with a create model function. This is all imported from this SPML utils and it requires a few arguments. The one is like, okay, which model um, do we want to create? Mm. Especially this this model here M, which we defined. I just give it another uh, name that's nicer to work with. So this is our model, and then we have to say, okay, where do we want to create this SPML file for the model? Um, so we use the model um, base path um, that we always are in the right folder. 
and then we say we want to write um, on a file. In this case, this is a SPML file for the model. We require this in the uh, here with the ID and give it an XML uh, extension. In addition, I um, uh, define the SPML level and SPML version, just to be sure to have the uh, right version. Okay, this is basically um, the simple thing. I will execute that and then um, should get some feedback. And the feedback here is basically that uh, here something went wrong. Um, most likely it couldn't read the file or something. Okay, but um, overall um, something worked, but we definitely have like somewhere a, a, a wrong pass though. So um, I think you you added an S to the model. Like where? in defining the base part, you added an S, but oh, there's okay. no uh, S. Okay. Perfect, okay. Um, model, perfect, okay. So let's go back. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, this looks much better. Uh, nothing red here and it uh, executed it. And now we can also see it could create the file and created an SPML file. And now there's not much in there. There's basically this information which we defined um, somehow. This version one initial, uh, there's some terms of use which I added that this is basically, it's just like, okay, uh, that this must contain this copyright stuff and that we don't, uh, if somebody's applying that to treat patients, we're not responsible and it's just like, okay, just, uh, okay, just stuff to be sure because uh, nobody knows what people are doing with this models. It's just, okay, we had, we don't take any responsibility for what you're doing with this model and that's it. And I added myself as creator and, um, yeah, that's it. But you can see there's a lot of XML which was created. Um, and um, this SPML utils is basically providing an abstraction layer uh, around this whole thing. Okay, this is still a pretty boring uh, model. So what we at least want to do is adding a compartment for the liver and probably for some external external part and then um, um, adding the Ramipril and the Ramiprilat. Um, let's see, where have we been? I think we look at this picture here. We want to create basically this liver here, and this liver has somehow associated a blood compartment. And basically, from this external blood compartment, something should be imported in the liver, probably ramipril, and something should be exported. It's uh, most likely ramiprilat, which was um, then, yeah, and the ramipril was converted in the liver to ramiprilat. Whereas we're trying to build a small building block, which can later be connected to the to the rest of the uh, um, physiology. Okay, for that, what we need is um, we need a compartment, or two compartments, basically the liver and then um, and an external compartment, and we need um, we need of course our substances. Okay, let's see. Let's start with the compartments. So what we do now, we're adding to this M, which is our model, um, additional objects. And uh, these are basically this SPML objects, which are in this list of um, list of structures. So, um, so we're just adding compartments here and we're adding a compartment and uh, given, give it a name. Uh, we just call this Vx, give it a value. Um, I give this here around uh, 1.5. Um, and this doesn't mean anything if we don't have a have a unit. But um, yeah, our unit is basically um, a liter. And this is also how normally uh, uh, how big a liver is. It's around one to two kilograms. And liter, it has a density of around 1.1 grams per milliliter and um, yeah, it depends, of course, if you're a big person or a low, small person, but normally around two to three percent of your body are liver. So if you know your body weight, and I don't know if you weigh around 100 kilograms, then you have around two to three kilograms of liver. If you're a small, small woman, I don't know, have 60 kilograms, you can uh, calculate that. So, um, um, yeah. Okay, but this is a good, um, for a reference human, this is a good, um, good first value. Um, we would give this, um, uh, and oh yeah, sorry, this was of course I should call this liver. Um not external, this is the actual liver we built. We give it a name, liver, and that's also good that now it's really documented. This is our compartment which corresponds to the liver. 
I give um, some other fields, which are just a bit important. Constant means just, okay, this is not, um, not actually changed over time, meaning like, um, okay, this is a, with a constant compartment volume and over our simulations, no matter what we're doing, this will stay constant. Of course, there could be some swelling of the liver and so on in your in the model, but then we can't set this constant. And um, yeah, the de default for um, compartments is constant here, but I um, I just set it to uh, uh, that you can see what what's going on. Um, and we define this as a uh, as a physical compartment via providing this SPO terms. Um, often I um, I have also annotations, so I will uh, I will use these annotations, and um, yeah, okay. And so I will just copy these annotations from somewhere else, um, and and reuse them. So I'm I will put this in the just in the ba base directory here, um, because most likely we will also use this for for the other substance. I will just um, annotations. Oh, yeah. oh man, I can't write annotations. And it looks good. Okay. And the only thing I'm doing, I'm copying from my different models, this annotations in here. Oh man, but this was probably not good annotations. Uh, um, no, the real annotations I want uh, are these here. And this is just, um, I would say it's just a definition of, okay, um, if we use certain things um, here, we already looked up what annotations correspond to the liver and how you should describe the liver and other objects in such models. And we just reuse this dictionary. Um, exactly. So, um, we're basically just saying, okay, we want to reuse this, this annotations for all level. Yeah, um, so we will import this here. Um, and X research um, is now our base thing. And so we can import, so we import, um, import, um, importing the, um, oh yeah. Import annotations. So we imported all this informations, and then we just we reuse this um, information here that we look up what was um, written in the liver uh, liver component. Okay, that's on that. And um, yeah, the only thing uh, problem we still have is uh, basically defining our units. Um, we didn't use units so far. Um, So what I am um, doing here is basically that I'm reusing the um, some template units. And I just have to check where we have this templates here. Okay. So I will create another file template, which we can also reuse in, in the other model. Um, okay. And copying some information in here, um, and this is basically that we're defining some some base units um, which we want to use in um, in our model. So we often need things like millimolar, minutes, milligram, um, square meter, and so on. And this is just okay. We just define them once, and we also define like uh, once what are the core units in which our model is calculating. So for now we're going. Um, uh, so if we calculate some time course or some time dependency of our model, this will be in minutes. If we have something with the substances, this will be in uh, millimole. Um, if we have some length, this will be in meters, and if we have areas, this will be in square meters, and our volumes will be in liters. And this is um, just what we 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 use in um, we use in our liver model. So. Um, so we'll just define um, define our, our our core units here, and we say this is just um, the templates which we are defined here, and we importing this uh, templates from this templates model which we uh, just created. So that's good. We have this unit definitions, 
and we don't have any custom uh, definitions right now. So I just write here path, uh, this, this is working. And then we have our U and we can use the U to access the units which we predefined and um, the liter is basically predefined. So we can just get here the code completion. Okay, very nice. We have a first compartment and now we want um, yeah, a first species. Um, and this is, um, we want to say, okay, the this works now very similar that we just add a species to our model and um, define some fields for that. And then we already have the species and model. And then we have to extend the whole thing to, okay, add more compartments, add this, uh, the second species, adding some transport from the external compartment in the liver and having a metabolic reaction, which um, converts the um, ramipril to the ramiprilate. And then we, it's already a pretty good, um, pretty good submodel here. Okay, um, so let's go for the species. Um, like, um, like for the compartment, we need an ID. Um, we will just call um, call this Rami Priel. Normally, I'm giving always like some short names, so I have to figure something. Um, yeah, yeah, let me out. Yeah, so we have to figure out some short name for that. Um, hmm. I will just call it Army Pril for now. And yeah, that's probably the easiest. Uh, this makes everything more uh, understandable. Okay. So what we need for a species, this is now um, basically a metabolite in a in a compartment. Um, we first have to say, okay, in which compartment are you located? Um, and um, it's located in the foul liver, uh, which we just defined. A second important thing is that we have to say, okay, um, if we simulate now, um, what is the um, initial what is the initial concentration? Um, concentration and this is normally just zero mm. of course concentration doesn't mean anything if you don't define any units the only thing we know now is that our liver is in liters but we have to somehow define what our um, substance units are of our substances I mean, I have to write some commas to get code completion okay what is our substance unit here our substance unit is in this case um, millimolar, millimol. So this is the substance. And of course, if you put this substance in this volume, we get a concentration, which is then in millimol per liter, which is millimolar. We still have to define if our species is in an amount, um, which would just be in, in, in millimol, or if it's in a concentration, which be, would be millimolar. And um, this we define with a um, has only substance units flag. And um, uh, yeah, the only thing you have to take away, if this is false, this basically means um, this is a, a concentration. What does this mean? Um, okay. Other things which we would do, do now is basically an SPO term. Um, we would just call this a simple chemical. And um, annotations we will do in a second. We basically have to we have to look that up, and um, I would say that's that's basically it. We can recreate the model and see if we have any errors. And yeah, now we get errors. So something um, didn't go right. Um, yeah, we definitely get some warnings. For instance, here name should be set on Ramipril. We can definitely do that. Um, so we have our Ramipril. This is our SID. We would give this a name. Uh, name is also um, Rami Priel. I would just um, add the information that this is Rami Priel in the liver. Okay, and then there's um, other things. Um, here it says unit identifier in the units on uh, substance units must be the identifier of the unit definition in the model. Um, okay, so most of the most likely, okay, that's typo. The millimol um, is not does not exist in the in the model. Okay, and why is that? Because basically we um, we imported this units, but we didn't say um, to the model, um, please please use these units. 
So, um, so we will do this now. Let me say, um, yeah, this this model works with the following units. Um, it's basically this um, new units, and we also set the model units. Um, and here we take the um, the model units which we defined in in the template. This was basically okay that we want liters and millimole and all this stuff. And so now now the model knows it should use these units. And um, then it, if it tries to look up the units for the species, it will also find them in the in the model. Okay, this looks good. Everything is green. Everything is good. And so we we created the model. We can. Um, it's working. We can have a look at that. I just clicked on the, the browser. And if you uh, look at the source code, this is basically the SML, SPML code. We see like, okay, there's all this information up here. Now we also have a lot of unit definitions in here, but we have also some additional things like we created a compartment and we created a, a, a species here. Um, and a lot of information is in and also our annotations and so on. This stuff was um, already written in here. Okay. Um, Let's look at the model in um, in SPML for humans. This would be one of the first steps. Um, it's still a bit uh, boring what we what we have right now, but um, um, so source X research Amipri model results. So we created this model. I loaded, and we basically can. Yeah, see here a high level overview. Okay, what we have, we only have a one compartment, but we get ah, this is a liver. Okay, we created that, and we have one substance in here, and we don't have much information about that. Okay, but we can um, easily see okay, what do we have in the model, get a nice overview, um, um, also look up okay, what are our units, and so on. So, all the information which is somewhere encoded in the SPML is nicely um, accessible via, via this front end. The, Second thing one normally uh, does is also using the SI SPML um, to, to visualize um, how the model um, looks like. We can um, easily incorporate this in our model creation pipeline by um, um, by just using the, the SPML file and visualize it. Um, the cytoscape um, and just using the SPML path, which we can retrieve from this um, results. Um, so and if I execute this now, then um, the model will be created, but at the same time, the model will also be visualized. And this is basically what our models looks like. We just have here one Rami Pril in the liver, a bit boring, not, <laughs> not much is happening with that, but it's, this is basically what we have. And if you look at other views like a kinetic flu, okay, here we can see, okay, we have also the liver and the Rami Pril is in the liver or connected to the liver. So this is all what we have right now in this model. Is it, it's a bit boring, but we would now extend that to um, add additional things um, to the model. So what we definitely need is um, an import um, from the blood to the um, to the actual um, from the blood to the liver. So we will just add this here, and um, can you reuse a lot of the information which which we have in here? So this is um, we will just call this X. We leave this um, the same volume. Also, uh, this is just like for. Okay, just for model debugging, this makes it easier if we know, okay, we have one and a half liters liver and one and a half liters of blood. And so like uh, this, like not one of the compartments is very small compared to the other. And then like basically dynamics and kinetics are much easier if you want to test this in isolation. So for now, I'm just uh, putting this in here. In reality, if we couple this to the whole whole body system, of course, this volumes um, will, will change to the extra plasma volume, which are, blood volumes which are associated with the with the liver. So we give this um, uh, a nice name. Now we call this just uh, plasma and also use uh, annotations which we already have predefined for that. This is the plasma. It's not much more to do. 
And of course, the Rami Priel, which is uh, existing in the um, in the liver, should also exist in the uh, in the plasma. So we have to give a give an identifier and also put this in a different uh, compartment, and everything else can stay the same. So we have now basically uh, two species in. Uh, Two compartments, everything still looks good. Just quickly showing that. Okay, this is also still not uh, very exciting, but okay, now we have Ramipril in the plasma, Ramipril in the liver. Okay, looks nice. And um, yeah, what we now want is a transport um, between the uh, two different, uh, different compartments. And for that, we would add an, uh, a, a reaction, which is transporting that. Um, from the plasma to the actual liver. So to the reactions, we're adding a, a, a reaction. And very similar, we have to give a, a, a lot of fields, but we basically need IDs and, uh, and um, certain other things. So let's start with the uh, last ID. Um, so, um, Yeah, uh, let's uh, probably have to give shorter names. Um, I never like long names, uh, long IDs. This is, gets uh, in the long run. This gets really complicated. Uh, Perhaps Rami as <laughs> a shorter. I yeah, know. yeah, I know, but then I need the Rami. Okay, wait. wait I will just uh, I will just add the other two uh, uh, two species, then we can decide on something here. I don't know. Uh, so, so um, let's see. This is basically what we need in here. The second external uh, thing. This is basically on our Rami Bilat. So I need some shorter name for that stuff here. And we have, um, what is this? And we need a Rami, Pril, Rami Prilat or also in the liver, Rami Prilat. So yeah, huh. good question. Rami, yeah, but then, uh, yeah, okay, I don't know. This is all not not nice. Okay, I will go with okay. I will go with real and rat. <laughs> Even if they are, okay, just bear with me. This should uh no. Real and Rat. Okay, I can uh, remember that. So if we talk about real, this is Rami Priel. And if you talk about Rat, this is Rami Prilat. Okay, that's the only thing you have to remember now. Uh, so we have real and, and Rat. And uh, the names are basically saying what it is. So, okay, happy with that. Let's just check if this uh, is still, um, still building. Looks good. Okay, so let's add this reaction. Because then I can really use our um, our things here. I will call this just real im and give a proper name for that. Um, the point is now you want short IDs. Uh, this makes your life much, much easier if you program and access things and so on. Um, our substrate import is probably not the nicest. Rami, real, Rami import and I will just also write the ID in here. This makes it easier to recognize this. And now we need to write an equation and the equation basically say, okay, this is your process equation. What is on the left hand side of the um, process on the right hand side and what is happening to what? And is this reversible or not reversible? So what we, what we have is our real extern and we want to import it basically. Uh, so we want to uh, to convert real extern to real via this process. Um, we say this is um, reversible, so real could also be exported um, and, and, and go outside. This is basically what this equation is saying, what is converted and what. Um, we also have a compartment. This is mainly a compartment for uh, localization. Um, this helps later on in, in visualization, but we don't really need this for, for my mathematical uh, uh, 
point of view. So, um, but I will just add it here and um, so that we can localize also our reactions in certain uh, compartments. So this is our power membrane. We, because we don't use this in any mathematics, um, we can just say, okay, it doesn't really have any value, but this is um, because it's a membrane, it has a uh, surface or an area. And this is basically our plasma membrane. Yeah, this is it. Now it gets a bit complicated because in reality now we're looking at something like cells. The cell would import and export and import and export things via the membrane. But we basically do a whole liver, which consists of many, many cells, of many, many hepatocytes. So this plasma membrane is okay. It refers somehow to the cell, but somehow we also talk about the liver. So it's it's more like all of the plasma membrane of all of the cells we have, of all the hepatocytes we have. and over them it's transported. So this, so this is often the problem is that you have different dimensions, like different scales and you have to, the naming is often like, yeah, it's not the ideal one, but it's, I would say it's um, it's good enough. And we use um, the plasma membrane annotation we already have in the other file. Only important thing is here that we give different spatial dimensions um, because this is a, a surface and, uh, by default, compartments are three-dimensional, but in this case, we have an area which is two-dimensional. Okay, long story short, we just said we build a dummy compartment, which we call membrane. And um, this is a transporter, which is um, um, localized in the membrane. And um, um, we can now also say that this is, um, that this is actually a, a transporter. Oh, yeah, the SPO term. Um, So transport reaction and um, additional things we will do um, is now we have to define a, a formula and the formula is basically describing um, what is the kinetics of um, of this transport. So, um, so for the formula, we will just say this uh, depends on a, a maximal uh, velocity. This is mainly our uh, for max of the of the import, and we will use here a, a reversible uh, Michaelis Menten kinetic. Um, basically, if we break it down, this is just saying okay, this depends on the real x term minus the real. So it depends on the difference of these two comp components. So if real x term, like this equation, if real x term is larger than real, then we will have a positive flow of positive flux. Um, so this is important, a positive flux relative to this equation. So meaning if real x term is larger than real, it will import something from outside here to the inside. And then we uh, basically just um, scale this via um, some um, some affinities. So it just depends on the real extern via, via, uh, via an affinity constant. And we have to do the same same thing for the uh, for the sec uh, for the other side of the reaction equation. So this here, okay. So this is basically a um, reversible Michaelis Menten kinetic, especially just says, okay, this is a, um, this has a transport, which depends on the uh, difference between the concentrations between the two compartments. And um, this is you giving, uh, giving you a, a saturation of, um, and this saturation is defined via this um, PAM constant. What we're doing in our models is always that we um, uh, scale that um, to the actual uh, liver volume we have. And that means basically if the liver volume is changing, also like basically all our processes are changing with the volume. This just makes um, many things much easier. Don't have to get why yet, but um, at, some, yeah, at some point this will be clear. And um, for to be um, unit consistent, we have to um, also, um, divide here to get um, 
constant units because basically all in the um, lower part of the oh, how is that? the denominator is dimensionless so this is dimensionless this is dimensionless and this so the whole denominator is dimensionless but here we still have um, um, some our concentrations are in millimolar so we're dividing via this which is also in millimolar to get all the equations out and then we also only have the maximal velocity which is scaled with a liver volume okay only problems we have is okay liver volume we defined already as 1.5 liters here we have our substances we defined they're all zero millimolar at the beginning the problem is we don't have values for this um, parameters which we now have in this equation um, so we have still to um, define this um, this two parameters we can do this and we could do this either like um, globally as parameters but we can also do this locally here at the at the reaction and so I will just define them um, define them here so this are just um, it's just a parameter and um, similar to the other things we have to give uh, IDs and values and so on so we need um, this will for max parameter we need an um, initial value I just set this to 1.0 uh, like always we need a unit um, we defined um, our model units um, from this uh, templates so our um, all our substances are basically in millimolar and our times in minutes. So our processes will all be in millimole uh, per minute. So these are our weights of our processes. So in the end, this means that um, all our processes need some need basically a, a, out of this formula, there has to come out some equation which has millimole per minute. But because we scaling this parameter uh, with a liver volume, um, that's basically another division via the, the lead liter in here okay we can give an spo term for that uh, this is um, basically a maximal velocity for a reaction so we can use, uh, assign a maximal velocity and we can give a name um, uh, to describe better what this is and this is um, this is uh, basically the vmax for the rami uh, real import well, it's just the max, maximal weight with this uh, with what um, this uh, import can happen and we have uh, uh, also a saturation constant um, this is our um, per m here or uh, for the rami priel and this is 0 0.1 millimolar so these values are just values we, we guess right now. Of course, this we have to define, figure out from the literature or like um, um, get values via parameter fitting to the ex actual experimental data. So those are just values for now. The liver volumes are values we, we can get from the physiology because we know how big livers are and how much liver, plasma volumes we have, but we have no clue how fast um, is the liver importing the ramic wheel um, at this point. Okay. This is that. Uh, of course, we have to check again uh, if this is working. Probably some, something is broken. Exactly. So, for instance, here we get an error. This uh, KMS is referring to something which we haven't defined. Makes sense because we, uh, we define this um, KM parameter uh, with the real and with the S. And okay, now I see everything is valid, everything worked, and also the, the units are, are correct here. So if we would have used like wrong units and um, not the right units are coming out of the whole equation, we we'll basically um, get some unit information. Okay, what went wrong and um, and so on. We could debug and see see what do we have to put in here. Okay, the whole model is now um, a bit more interesting, I would say. So if we can see that, so that's basically what we did. We added um, this importer, so Rami Pril can now be imported in the liver. We also added this other two substances, but um, they are not um, uh, connected yet via this um, process graph. Basically, this cannot be uh, imported or exported. So far, so good. So we will do this uh, additional two connections, um, and then we could um, run a first just a first simulation to check um, okay if this makes somehow sense what is what is happening here okay let's see if we can manage that in 
in a few minutes. Okay. So I'll make this a bit smaller that we see more of the code. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have the substances. Uh, okay. At this point, yeah, what I would probably do, we also have at some point to um, save. This is again, not a good example. Normally you should save much more of, or like this is saved, but uh, we have to commit it to the repository. Um, for this, I would um, just add a git ignore because we don't want to add um, all files um, in the repository. There are certain files which we're really not interested in. These are mainly temporary files and uh, and things which are coming from the from the I don't know from Mac and uh, from uh, from this comes from the. Um, Graphical uh, from this integrated development environment. This is okay. This we don't want. The locks the, because it's okay. The DS store we don't want. Notebook chat points we're not interested in. This we can remove. Let's see what else we have. We definitely need the PyCache. We don't need the PyCache. Why are they not listed here? Okay, let's see. Um. Let's exclude that. So we see what we, what we have here and what we want to, to commit. So at this point, um, I have to go to the right repository. This is here and I would do a git status. And we see, um, okay, we have, uh, uh, what did we change? The skit ignore was modified. Requirements, the inits are in here, templates. And we also have the results. And in the results, they are basically our, our, our first version of the model here. Yeah, this is all good. This looks good. We want to um, add all of that and add the, um, the results also of the model. Um, and I will just push that and um, And then we should see that. Uh, okay. Ah, yeah. Now I have to set. Um, oh, probably this didn't push because I changed the branch. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. Where is it exactly? I still have to set the up, upstream branch because I I went into a different branch in this development branch um, to not destroy the main. So and this is uh, pushed now and. Um, I meant before with the branches, this is um, basically there are different versions now. There's here a development branch. And here we have all the files which I just created. And you can see this are now uh, all online and others could then uh, pull them and continue working on that. Um, yeah, I just want to make the main branch um, a develop branch so that we just um, I'm not renaming. Um, was it switch to another branch? Okay, update. Understand. So and now we see basically the develop. Uh, sorry, the develop changes here. Okay. So far so good. Let's quickly add the um, other two reactions. Um, So we have an importer for the Ramipril. We want an exporter for the Ramipril art. So this is our art export. And um, in this case, um, okay, because it's an export, our art from internally will be transported uh, in the plasma compartment. It's all also local at the membrane. And we again have um, we have the um, max and the, and the KM parameters which we need. I have to update um, the 
the equations. I should also fix issues which we find in the uh, model. For instance, this is not a Vmax. Uh, this is a KM value and uh, this uh, Michael is constant. So, and okay, we have to fix the equations and have to fix also the naming in the upper part. So here, um, main thing we have to do is um, update our, our name, the rat x, and uh, our real has to be changed to rat. And of course, the uh, direction of the equation has to be different because now this is an export. And so it should have a positive flux if the internal concentration is larger than the external concentration. Okay, let's fix here. Now we had the wrong naming and the wrong uh, SPO term. Okay, just quickly checking that this works. Okay, having a quick look at the visualization. Okay, this looks good. We have the importer and an exporter, and now we need the connecting reaction um, between the two. Um, okay. So, I will just uh, copy this one to add the third reaction, or oh, third process. In this case, this is um, I would just call this real to rat. This is uh, this is probably probably an oxidation. I have uh, I would just call it conversion for now. Um, this is all stuff which has to be updated uh, step by step as we learn more about the substances and how they work. And now this uh, conversion would just convert the real um, to the rat. But in this case, um, this would be um, irreversible because um, this is most likely related um, with energy and so on. Uh, often these metabolic conversions, they are irreversible. And for simplification, we would just, um, this is like this. This is of course now not located in the, um, in the membrane, but in the actual liver. And um, hmm. reaction. And this is a biochemical reaction and not a transport reaction. So we also have the max, the max values for that. And we have um, a KM value for that. Sorry to add, what is the typo? There's the KM for here, KM here. For the conversion. And of course, now this equation um, becomes a bit simpler because this is irreversible. So it depends only on the substrate. The substrate is the real which we are converting. And <laughs> Not the second part here. And then we can check that this is uh, just correctly named. So this should be a real to art. And okay, this looks pretty good. Let's see if this builds. And then we have to check a bit more if this is really what we uh, what we wanted. Okay, this is still correct. And now we have a. We really have this um, um, this nice connection, like basically Amipril is imported in the liver. It can then be converted um, via this reaction to Amiprilat. And subsequently this Amiprilat can be exported and um, go out again. And of course this um, would be then um, replaced with the, um, the actual uh, metabolization. Um, so um I quickly a layout of this stuff. Um two 
from this one. Okay, I think uh, we started a few minutes later. I will just, um, I'm basically finished. I just want to show a very quick simulation. Just um, lately what I'm doing now is uh, I will just save the layout um, and put it also in the repository. This is um, the mm -hmm, our weeks research repository and is for the Rami Priel model. Sorry, this is always small, but um, this is basically Rami Priel liver and the layout file for that. And I would also um, quickly store a figure for that. Um, export as network image, PNG, transparent background. And close Rami Priel level. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. So we just have here the layout and uh, okay. We can basically see this is what we uh, what we created so far. This is our uh, last model. And then would now use uh, um, show a very simple simulation as uh, as last point. I don't think we do much about the um, organization. I think the most important thing right now is that you send me all your GitHub accounts. I will send a reminder for that and please fill out all the forms I'm sending. I, I really need the, the the feedback of the of the evaluations and so on. And this really take this takes you 30 seconds. I, not even. You just click on the on the links I send and just uh, go through it. This takes you a minute or so. But this helps me a lot in the evaluation and in the planning and so on. And um so, yeah, so the most important thing, GitHub accounts and uh, please fill out the forms I send and have a look at the a bit at the recordings and the things I'm I'm, I'm showing now. Um, okay. So um, let's see if I have. Um, I would use a tool which is Copasi, which is a simulator for um, uh, for SPML models. Thirty-seven. Okay. So yeah. And just show that we can load the model. We would use actual different simulators later on. Um, oh, skip version. Okay, but uh, it's just a, a proof that this is an exchangeable format, and we could use it with uh, different uh, different tools. So, for instance, now we would um, we would just load the model. Um, this is X Research here, and go for the model which we created. Results. Here's our liver. We open that. And oh, okay, there are some warnings. You can ignore that. But this is basically, um, yeah, we, we get the information here and we see also in the model, we have certain things. We have an overview over the compartments, plasma liver, plasma membrane. We have our four species. We have our three reactions in here. And of course we can run now um, uh, some simulations. Um, I would just run a simple time course with, with this model. Um, and um, so I would just run it for uh, let's say uh, two hours, and create um, uh, five hundred data points. Um, I just say please um, plot my concentrations and volumes and so on, and would run that. Okay, and this looks um, very very boring. It's basically like. Um, you see this Rami Priel and Rami Prilatio, but you basically saw nothing Nothing is happening. And this is basically because everything is zero. We just said, uh, okay, everything should be zero. So all of these fear, four things are just down here at the, at the zero line. So we would quickly change um, the um, substrate concentration in the plasma of the uh, Rami Priel. So here, so we would just set the initial concentration I don't know, to 10. So this is now 10 millimolar and we would rerun the, the simulation. Um, okay, let's look at the window. Now you can see much more, much more interesting things are happening. Um, it's basically, okay, I will put the stuff out. Um, so we are, 
basically what we see here, this is a ramipril in the plasma, and this starts at 10, and somehow this is going down. And this is go the only way why, why this is going down is because we have an import process, which is importing it in the liver. And we can see that this is what's really happening because, uh, okay, you see, oh, basically the colors are horrible, but you see like a green curve going up here. Uh, and so it's imported, but this is not going very high, and it's not going very high basically because this is directly converted uh, to to ramiprilat. This is um, this here, and this ramiprilat uh, is afterwards um, exported uh, exported here. And this is basically what is happening in the reaction. Like you see, in the end, the ramipril in the liver and the ramiprilat in uh, ramip prelate in the liver and in the plasma gain the same concentrations. This is basically because we have a reversible reaction and it's not favoring the one or the other. So they both um, go to the same reaction. And the ramipril is going to zero. And it's, this is mainly because we have this irreversible step in between of the conversion of ramipril to ramiprilat. Okay, so overall this works like expected. And then, um, yeah, very last thing, you could also do things like parameter scans and so on. And just for instance, here do a, uh, a parameter scan, create. And we could um, just do a scan of the initial concentration of Ramipril in the plasma. Okay. And we can um, do just scan this from 0 0.1. 20 in 10 steps and then uh, run this time course, create, no, not create, just run, uh, run. And then we can, ooh, I killed it again. Okay, let's see. And then we can we can see interesting thing, things like that. And basically we now we did a parameter scan which has changed stepwise our initial concentration. And we can see, okay, the effect on, um, on the different metabolites we now have in this model. Okay. And the simple conversion. So this basically just shows we created a model, we can simulate it, um, somehow it makes sense. But of course, this has to be like refined and like um, parameter fitted and so on and put into the whole body physiology. But this just shows the, the basic way of how such models are built. You need an idea what should be converted and how and so on. And then you just put this into this object and then you can um, numerically simulate what, what is happening with that. Okay, I'm stopping here. Um, I would say if you have, um, yeah, there's, um, please ask uh, questions if you have questions. Otherwise I have to say today, this is, um, you don't have to understand everything I showed you today. I think the most important thing is that we take away, okay, uh, one can build models. This also doesn't take too long. Um, yeah, there is some programming involved, but of course not everybody has to do that or and understand it. It's more like you have to have grab this, um, general concepts of, okay, there are processes and there are metabolites and they are converted and you can put this into models. And um, um, I think this is the most important thing you have to take away. Also that this is all then st stored in some standard format. And um, there are some simulators which can create numerical results out of that. Okay, how this all works, how the equations work and so on. Don't, it's not so important. The main thing is here to see, okay, um, you can run um, dynamical simulations from that. And this is basically what, what ordinary differential equations mean. You can write equations for your processes and then you can run time course simulations of how would this processes change your, your um, metabolite concentrations. And this is what's happening in this physiological based pharmacokinetic models is just um, um, processes such as blood flow or metabolism import export change the the extra concentrations in the different compartments and by that you get um this um different pharmacokinetic curves okay yeah um stopping here please uh, if you have questions um feel free to ask uh, i would say yeah uh, the the groups we will really build next time uh important message is like next time is really in in person um we would um we have to do some actual actual work, and so if possible, bring your bring your laptop, and um, yeah, uh, please also send in the next few days your your GitHub accounts and try to get access to these files. And um, yeah, and uh, please feel free to ask questions about uh, if things are not working or you don't understand what what to do or how to do it.
Okay, um, any questions? Otherwise, I just, <laughs> you can always write in the chat and uh, um, Okay, oh, I lost everybody. That's also like, seriously, if I lost everybody, this is also important information. I, I Then I will go three steps back and do things slower and in sm smaller portions. I think today was the, the thing like just to throw a lot of things at you and then um, take it from there. Um, okay. Um, uh, yeah, so a question. So next time, uh, you said you uh, we would be doing a lot of actual work. So, um, is this referring to building the model itself, or is that going to be data creation? No, it would or? be. It would be mainly. We would next time we would uh, do actual data things. Um, and it's more what I, in a few words. The main thing would be um, that everybody is taking one of the publications that we have. The groups. Everybody is. Um, uh, taking one publication and trying to understand the pharmacokinetics and starting to um, retrieve some information which we then can use for the modeling. So there would be some introduction on how to do that. We definitely won't uh, create all these papers uh, next time, but it would be more like we start, like basically we, we would start that everybody um, tries to work on one one publication and get as much data as possible in, in the actual repository. Let's see how this goes. Um, I think this would be the next step to see the actual pharmacokinetics data and then um, start building the models to um, adapt it to the actual data. Okay, thanks. Okay, see you. Have, uh, have a nice evening. And um, if you have questions, just write me. Bye. 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 Bye.